Hello everyone and welcome in to the Gallagher Shield final brought to you by Goodyear Grammar Tech versus Eden. The two sides finishing three and four respectively in the uh, round robin competition and they uh, meet, meet out here in what is, like the rest of the country, a pretty miserable day. The weather's come down, there's a few people in here but they're mainly pushed towards the back as they will run out of uh, the number two changing shed into what is a very, very wet afternoon of the gar at the Garden of Eden this afternoon. So we'll wait for the two teams to come out, but as we do that, we'll have a wee talk and a wee chat about where they've been to get here. Both teams in the regular season, season winning 10 and losing two. Um, the one game they did play against each other is Eden were beaten by Grammar Tech 22-13, but that was way back in round five. A lot has happened since there. That's to see their semi-final. Eden was far too good for Ponsonby on the back of a very strong forward pack. And the weather may just suit them this afternoon. And Grammar Tech, the third place qualifier, got home, scraped in against College Rifles with a young winger, Caleb, scoring underneath the posts to clinch that one for them. So three meets four in the Gallagher Shield final. Eden... They see their supporters push towards the back because of the rain. But this is their first time ever in the big dance. A club that was founded in 1922 and 99 years on, this is their first time that they have been to a Gallagher Shield final. As the Bull Kids wait for the two teams to come out, on the other side of the equation, we've got Grammar Tech, who uh, is a... Uh, mixture of clubs put together, Teachers Eastern, Grammar obviously, Grafton was uh, founded in 1873 and their latest win of the Gallagher Shield was back in 2015. There's the two teams, what you'll notice on the left hand side, Grammar Tech there, the likes of Tua, they were in for a big day, a good looking pairing with Liam and Felix in the middle row. Their real strength you've got to say for the Grammar Tech team is their back line. Tom Straw, Jock McKenzie, will kick the ball around. Hitamaya Murray has been very good. 11 tries in the season so far. And Caleb Tangatau, the man in 11, he was the one that got them going. Here's Eden coming out first. The team, as we see Frankie Frickenard go past a team that has got a very, very big forward pack. And as I mentioned earlier, the weather might just suit them. The two Costa boys at 9 and 10 will try and control territory. And that'll be on the back of a very, very big Ford pack that was super impressive against Ponsonby, beating them, as we mentioned earlier, 20 to 8 on their home patch. So, as you can see in the cameras, the weather's coming down. It's not the greatest of weather, but as mentioned, that'll potentially suit these guys. They rely on the work of their scrum. Very good scrum, very good line out, big, thick set forwards that punch onto the ball, and then the two Costa boys, Nico and Iggy, they control their tempo around the field as well. Sione Kotoa there in the 14 jersey. Look for him to come off the blind wing and add a little bit of punch as well. So Eden are out. They're ready to go. Next to no wind whatsoever to speak of, but as mentioned, plenty of rain. And here comes Grammar Tech. And there's their captain, Liam. And there's Victor Tuomafasi leading them out. And these guys here have experience in their forward pack, a very good locking combination. But what has made them successful this year is the spark of their outside backs. Plenty of speed, the likes of Jack Gray, Hidamaya Murray, Caleb Tangatau, and a couple of young 9 and 10. And Tom Straw, and also Jock McKenzie. Almost a clash of styles in these two. And just while I get the opportunity before we go live, I'll introduce the man next to me, which I believe is in his debut. Jared, welcome in, mate. Yeah, cheers, Bates. You're a bit nervous stepping up to the plate <laughs> since uh, your mate Dan Bowden uh, left us in the lurch, but really excited to be here. Watch a good game of footy. Like you've said, uh, two teams met a little bit earlier this season. Good uh, contest out there. Obviously, G Tech getting up for the win, but Eden's actually had the wood over the team in the last couple, five or so years, so it's going to be a great foot game of footy out there today. Just waiting for everyone to get started. As a seat. Looks like the Eden will play right to left, and Grammar Tech will kick off from an impressive young first five, Jock McKenzie. 
second year out of school, although his real first forte into club rugby this season due to stress fractures on, in his back. Who's a uh, he's not a bad cricketer, although as Jared would know, I w went clean through him in the nets the other day. So um, we'll leave that to you two to discuss, mate. <laughs> Couple of results earlier too. Eden picking up a win. Jared? Yes, in the development game. Good, tough uh, contest against Pakaranga, I believe. So they'll be happy looking for the, the double here. Need to believe they haven't checked. Last time we checked, Maris were leading the 21s. Jock McKenzie gets us underway. And here we go. The Gallagher Shield final for 2021. Last year, due to COVID, was cancelled mid season. The year before that and the year before that, Ponsonby won. So this year we will have a new champion, as mentioned, first time ever for Eden to be in the big dance. Interesting part of the game. Some genuine height in the five and four. Yeah, and there it is there. No win to no win to really talk of there. So that's just that's just on the throw there, unfortunately. But that is an area that Eden pride themselves in. We've mentioned that their set piece is very good and first scrum up. And on this close side, the number one, Frank Frickinate. It's been around me. See this just drifts into the G Tech side. Clearly not straight. Not quite the start they would have wanted. The first scrum will be interesting. As mentioned, plenty of experience in this Eden pack, and they, this is an area that they will like to dominate. Wouldn't surprise me if they just kept this one in the back and started shunting it forward. There we go. This is what we're going to see from Eden. There we go. Exactly what they wanted. Now they play an advantage. Costa is in, and this is what we'll see. Big off the outside, too. Freeze it, and they keep it alive. Murray over the ball, they get rid of them. Costa clears again. They settle, they clean out. Got the ball, they punch in the midfield. Goes forward, high into contact. Good defense by G Tech. You'll see they'll just build slowly. Will Eden. Costa takes it to the line. He's bent backwards for his brother to free it up. And this is the this is what they're made of. These Eden boys, they'll keep it close. They'll use the, the likes of the Rutherford brothers to carry and clean, and they'll try and dominate through the middle. You would imagine the advantage is gone from the earlier scrum penalty. Frickin' A takes it in. Slow ball. They'll keep punching away. Keep punching away. Patience from Eden early on. There we go. There's a template. They've always charged down. Ball on the ground. But knock on. Knock on against Eden. Good defense. So scrum, early, early issues in the scrum for G Tech, but easily took care of the big forward pack that Eden possesses. Going on, one off and around the corner. And you'll see a fair bit of that this afternoon from the side who bases themselves just down the road in Gribblehurst. So first one was well, certainly a uh, a big points victory to the Eden scrum. This time's first one on GTX ball, and they stand up. You'd imagine they wouldn't want to be playing around too much in here. They want the ball in. They want the ball out. Conversations heading a plenty about crowding the space. Uh, this is an area of the game, especially because of the weather, but an area of the game. That is hugely important for both sides. Eden will want to dominate in this area, and this is what will be the platform to their game. G Tech, they want to be in, they want to be out, and use their classy backline. 
creaks, but it stays stays firm. Tangatau off the wing. Yeah, over the top of the ball, and it's turned over, but not releasing in a penalty. Penalty to GTAC, and we get the first opportunity. You see Jock McKenzie come up, slot this one deep, hopefully get around the 22, just outside the 22. And hopefully, Jared, an opportunity. Yes, uh, the first line-up they had obviously went a little bit astray, so hopefully they'll learn from that, that mistake and uh, set a platform for the boys to go forward. Like you said, uh, there's a bit of excitement out there, so they'll be looking to get that ball in Caleb's hands pretty, pretty early. Try to throw to the back the first time. Maybe they'll just take something simple at the front to get them going, get a bit of confidence. Felix gets up, takes the ball. And they put them all on. Going to bring up some of those big Eden forwards and they put it strong with the hands all bit messy and they play off that it's play on Hala takes it Hala takes it in and this is a broken field play that they will not mind at all GTEC Hamish takes it forward Frank meets him the number one early on and then Jock McKenzie tries to slot it in a lucky ricochet, knock on, we're playing under advantage here. Jack Gay gets back, picks up, he's swooped on by Costa. They take the space, but we're going back for a knock on against GTEC. Thought they might have played a little bit more advantage there to see what happens, but... Jock McKenzie just trying to slot one through. Unfortunately, was just charged down and ricocheted off and then a knock on came from that here so Jock gets back apologies Jock mate you and Jack Gray look a little bit similar apologies to Jack <laughs> Frank getting a bit of a break already big man's going to work on the loose yeah. it's been good but they'll be under no hurry as you know Jared. they'll be under no hurry whatsoever Eden they won't want to play a game that is fast tempo plenty of experience in that Eden front row, but also in that whole Eden forward back. So they'll be under no hurry, will they, to get things moving? No, not at all. Lockie, we're not playing no basketball here. There'll be a shot clock violation <laughs> every 20 seconds when uh, when Frank's getting up to scrum time. They're going to play to your strength, so don't they? So fair enough to them. GTEC, on the other hand, they'll want a bit more open game. Whether maybe not conducive to that. But. She's eased up a little bit from the Storm game, so big credit to that, the Storm girls that went out there this morning or this afternoon. They'll be... Uh, Wishing they had these conditions. 44-12 to the Storm as well. So congratulations to Willie and Anna and the team for their first win. As we see once again, once again, second scrum to Eden. Plenty of packs on, pat on the back. And as we mentioned, this is what they will do. And probably a little bit far out. Oh, no. Here we go. Iggy Costa says, no, no. Oh, no. Which one is it? It's Nico Costa is going to slot this. And this is, this is what we... Uh, this is what their victory against Ponsonby was based on the back of. A good field position, good scrum, good line-out, both sides. Defensive scrum, defensive line-out, attacking both sides of the ball, and then a very good kicking game. They just accumulated points. But going back to the Storm game, Jared, a good start for the Storm girls, wasn't it? Fantastic. And uh, as we know, the girls were, were pretty decimated with injuries coming in with a short uh, turnaround and short campaign lead-up. So they'll be really, really happy. Anna and Willie will be fantastic. They'll be stoked with the performance. Not an easy kick by the any stretch of the imagination. Not much wind to speak of. Want to keep it low. I believe Nico's top point scorer in the competition this year, so he'll be looking to put this through. Pushed it across the face so they survive. But if the uh, if the Grammar Tech coaching staff were under any illusions in what they're up against, Joe and Noroa, they'll certainly know now, as Jock McKenzie puts it. Good strike. Gets it beyond the tent. 
There we go. We come off the back fence. We wind up and a bit of contact. There we go. And they won't get too excited with what they do here, Eden. Rutherford takes it forward. Cameron this time. A couple of brothers, as mentioned, in this Eden side, 9 and 10. One of the... Oh, yeah. It's a Brent Ward special right there, mate. <laughs> Andrew Kavanga <laughs> must be watching Wardy's clips on YouTube. <laughs> we'll let that one slide. <laughs> oh, Chock. <laughs> Yeah, as we mentioned, up and down the country, it's dis disappointing, disappointing for a lot of club finals this weekend. Here we go. First, we'll check out this Brent Ward special. <laughs> Hold on, here it goes here. One, and this one here. Here we go, we've been there. And then, unfortunately, Jock McKenzie turned the ball over and Jock McKenzie tries to kick it and it slips out of his hands as well. So, as we mentioned, up and down the country, there's plenty of bad weather, which is a little disappointing for rugby, but also... We think of people in the South Island that are uh, that are unfortunately getting absolutely hammered with rain, and we we hope you're safe down there. And tuned into a bit of a uh, bit of Gallagher Shield final in Auckland. As said, weather's not great, but we think of you guys down there. We hope all is well. Second scrum in. G Tech ball. Pressure's coming. Strong gets it in. No, he doesn't get it out. And here we go again. Here we go again. It's a simple recipe, but it is very, very hard to stop. Four scrums, three penalties. There it is here. Watch him. This is Frank. He just stays low on the loose head side. He keeps coming. Keeps coming. They twist in a little bit. He keeps reasonably square. Bucky Hill are your front rowers. You see plenty of rip football played between those three, but also the likes of the Rutherford boys in the back there, Lawson, Casey Pickering. Plenty of size. It's an area they have been good at too. Good carry. Get over the game line. They just keep working around the corner. Here he is again, Rutherford takes the ball, good defense. They keep working the same way, keep working the same way. Frickenard takes it, Frickenard takes it in this time. Fourth one round the corner. Wingers getting involved as well. An offload. Oh. Costa gets ragdolled a little bit there, no halfback. So they'll reset on this, on this open side, just punch away. Rutherford carries into the traffic. Oh. Trying to hold him into the ruck. Felix not that interested in being held in. And there we go. Pick and go, get going forward. This is a, here we go. They've big isolated Frankie. and big Frankie gets a, the legs moving. He can scrum, but he also can, doesn't mind a pick go too. Here we go. Here's his front row partner. Open it up. Simple stuff, but effective. They just keep chipping away, chipping away. Good ball control. Hamish gets in, counter rucks, nearly upsets them. There it is, chipping away. Felix in on the steal, off his feet, he's got to release it. For the umpteenth time, knees on the ground, he'll release there. He's got the advantage. Missed what that's for, maybe not releasing quick enough. But there's hands on the ground there as well, so that's probably another one. So this will play into their hands because they'll just keep battering away, battering away from some of those backs probably getting a bit cold out there, Jared. but that's no concern to Eden, is it? Nah, they're used to it, mate. <laughs> They've got warmers in the pockets. They'll be fine. <laughs> Playing under advantage. Here we go. Oh, no. Just one off, but punch as well over the advantage line. They keep chipping away. The advantage must nearly be over now, though, because you'd think Costa will be looking for a shot, but there we go. Going back to the advantage. Simple, but when you've got a big forward pack, you've also got Katoa on the blind side wing, who will just smash over the advantage line for you. It's easy to know about it, and everyone knows that's how they play. But there's another way of trying to stop it, Jared. Correct, correct. Eden's been playing the same way for about five years, and like I said, they've had the wood over G Tech in the last five years. But mate, it's easy, like you said, it's easy to see it, easy to but harder to stop it. It's a good story too, Eden as well, a club that. As mentioned earlier, first time 
in the big dance for in their existence. 99 years. A few years ago, they were really struggling down the bottom of the competition, getting bugger all wins whatsoever. So, got a few guys as I said, got a few guys with a bit of experience that have been together for a for a while now. Also, must may mention they've got a few younger guys as well with them. The likes of Manu Pai, Violini as well, who played for the New Zealand 20s this afternoon. Who took down the Cook Islands at midday at, at Dilworth. So they do have a bit of youth coming through as well. Here we go. We've got the first points. Three points to Eden, three points to nil after, we've got to say, Jared, all the territory, all the position. I don't think we've had to turn our heads to the right apart from a kickoff. And this is the game plan from Eden. Play it where they have it. play it down in G Tech's own half. They've just chipped away and a deserved lead, 3 0. Agreed, mate. They needed to uh, capitalise on the, the territory they have down there. Been down there for, what, 20 minutes or so, nearly. So uh, they'll be happy with the result. And the simple. And here we go. So. They kick down, eat an exit on the 10 metre. This is almost like the start of the game. So for me in this for this situation, they just need to secure their line out, get rolling, get their hands on the pill. Nothing too flash. Get their hands on the pill, get a little bit of confidence with ball in hand. Liam, their skipper in the four jersey, will call. Felix, number five, is good speed across the ground. Good feed. There we go. Oh. We go a little bit more width to the game. McKenzie out to jo Jack Gray. And then straight away we see, uh, oh, yeah, well, there we go. A little advantage, though. Knock on there straight off the line out. I think it might have been James Rutherford in the seven jersey trying to intercept the ball from Strawn. And a little knock on in the air. You see straight away the, the difference in styles. Eden, they'll try and go straight through the front door. And with the likes of Gray. Hala, Couture, on the edges for Eden. They'll they'll have to be uh, they'll have to be up defensively because the likes of Jack Gray, Hitamaya Murray, who we mentioned, scored 11 tries this season. I guess first and foremost, the thing to think about for uh, for Grammar Tech is four scrums in. There's been three penalties, so they're gonna have to get this hook right. Victor Tuing on a fussy. You can see his hooking foot there. He's got to get that trigger done. In, out, gone. Because he didn't want to keep this ball in for as long as possible. This one to two, Jared. Well, we like to play with the ball in the hand, but sometimes. Some on a day like this, it's easy to be without it. So I wonder if young Jock just looks for a little bit of space in behind the scrum, rolls it into the 22. Caleb Tangatau on the left ring, maybe chases it. Another Frank special right there. No, I agree, I agree, Batesy. I think Jock's been uh, trying to do that a couple of times, but like you said, mentioned earlier, he's been charged down out of hand, but the excitement <coughs> man himself, Caleb Tangatau on the edge, put the ball down on the grass, and you know in these conditions, you never know where it's going to go. And, Put a bit of pace and put a bit of pressure on then. Like you said, might be better not to have the ball in the conditions today. Certainly, and he's been charged down a couple of times, but he's got plenty of time as long as they get decent ball off the set piece. He's got a good amount of space, as you can see by the pitches between him. There's only a fullback who's on the poles in the middle of the field for Eden. Who's Hull up. And there's plenty of open territory back there, so they get decent ball. I just wonder if Jock just decides to to roll it in the back, but they haven't got decent ball again, and this time it's not a penalty. But once again, it is becoming a real issue. This scrum is becoming a real issue for Grammar Tech. The fifth scrum in, three penalties, one win to Eden, and now a knock on at the back of the scrum. They just cannot clear the ball. Bates, it's something we're going to see all day. What, what, what are we telling? What, what's, what's not all the scrum coach or the fourth coach telling the boys when he gets a word? Well, the first thing he's got to do is they've got to uh, 
you've just got to get the ball in and out, which is easier simple, simply than done. But what you notice is you have Frank on this loose head side here. He's not necessarily working in, he's just constant pressure. So what they've got to do is they've got to hit in, stay together. Let's just get a quick hook and get, get going. So you watch on this one here. Watch how Frank stays low. The grammar tech side must stay low as well. They just start to lean in. They've done a lot better that side time there. That's more like it. But keep the constant pressure. They roll it in, but a good, far better scrum by Grammar Tech that time there. It's a constant pressure from Eden. Just they don't, they don't push in, in waves. They just keep it on. They just keep working. Let's really talk about the intelligence of a little bit of experience. Just get the scrum, roll it in behind. Let's put a line, a little bit of line out pressure on when the scrum's not going well. Has flow on effects for the other front rowers. Now we've got to throw a wet ball into a line out. Throw the back. Good throw. There we go. There's the option from Strawn. Costa up. It's my Murray. I oh know it's Caleb Tungatau. Sorry. Good catch by Caleb. Oh, he's offside. And done as well. Yep. Reaching in. There we go. So there's. There's maybe the blueprint that they're talking about. Young Ant Strawn puts it up in the air. Good chase by Caleb. He wins the aerial battle. There it is here. So good line out. They're made to throw to the back. But good height from Ant Strawn on the box kick. You see Caleb coming from the left wing. Good catch. Good high catch. And then here we just come in. Coming in from the side. Right there. Batesy, I think uh, Ant Strawn will be happy you're calling him young. That's his uh, young boy out there, Tom Strawn. Sorry, sorry. Ant, Ant Strawn's behind the post. He, he, he could never do that in his so, day, mate. <laughs> sorry, that's twice I've called him Ant, too. He is on the coaching staff, Ant. So, Jeepers, I do apologise, Tom. I do apologise, mate. You're far better looking than the old man. Yeah, it's hard enough being your dad yeah. and then being called him. Holy yeah. hecka. And a better person, too, as well, to boot. So, 100%. Yeah. Gee, Tom, let's just hopefully no one tells you that. I'll check my phone to see if anyone's correcting me. A big kick from Jock. Yeah, he was pretty uh, courageous last week against College Ruffles. I was fortunate enough to be out of the game, and he actually put the put the tee down about 60 out and gave it a bit of a nudge, and it wasn't far away, so he's got the list, the legs in him. Not like his father, uh, Grant McKenzie, who'll be here watching with his family. Then he tucked up in a cushy corporate box with a couple of um, brown powerades, I think. He's got, he's got the legs. He's got the legs. No, must have just slid to the left. So, and missed by much. Certainly got the legs. The plant foot in the wet conditions as well, but certainly had the legs, that's for sure. I think probably in a day like this, and we'd love to come here and we'd love to see an open game of rugby, running rugby and stuff like that, with all around the country, is not really conducive to it. So I think what we've seen from Grammar Tech is perhaps the, uh, the game plan going forward. Let's use that box kick of Strawn. Tom Strawn, that <laughs> is. Let's get... Their wingers, Gray, Tungatau, chasing them. Come off the back fence every now and then, though, too. But a Hydro Ocassini back <laughs> in the day. <laughs> Freeze it to Tungatau. Tungatau, a good young winger. He's out, though, there. It's probably... Let's see what we're talking about. So they, they see the space. So Jock sees the space. A couple of West, old Westlake teammates there. 10 to 11. I just do wonder, in these conditions, if you're better not to play so much. For people watching at home or wherever you're watching, I said, we haven't had the weather of perhaps the South Island, but we certainly had plenty of rain up here, and it um, doesn't look like it's coming down right at the moment. As Caleb takes the ball, comes forward, good option to kick. There's someone there, but unfortunately the execution is not quite what they needed, and it's taken back. Once again, they had just starting to win that territory battle again as Eden. Like their short line out, Eden, like their five mans, gives them a couple of uh, good line out, good movement, couple of forwards in the back line. I imagine we'll see one of them right here. Yeah, here we go forward. Pudge, lovely little short ball to get him behind. Got a little bit of space into here. They've made a good carry off the front line. And Rutherford comes around, but good defense, good strong tackle 
which slows them down and stops them in the tracks. And as we know, they'll go to work through this forward pack. Good line speed by Gramatech coming forward, knocking them behind the gain line. Liam will have to try and get out of there, which he cannot. Unfortunately, a tough one, but it is the rule, so he's penalised as Frank, not for the first time, gets a hit of steam on. Costa down the short side. That'll drag another penalty advantage. And there we go again. So, oh. So simple, yet effective. And what you'll see here, you'll see Iggy. Probably kick for the sideline. You'd imagine that is too far for Nico to slot. But they are looking around. They are looking. No, they've decided to go to the sideline. So. And the template will be exactly the same, I'd imagine. Unless they decide to maul. All depends on where they can get this ball. Looks like it'll end up around about the 22. Bates has just changed the, the thinking of Eden. They're obviously not going to probably tuck it down and chuck a maul in, or I could be wrong. It looks like they might. Like They do like to go to a five-man from here, uh, but generally... When they go to a full, they like, do like to maul. So, and that's exactly what they've decided. A long way out to maul. So they won't want to free it to their backs at the moment. But they've been pretty effective with this. And they were good in this area against Ponsonby. Nice and low. And they're chugging forward as well. So they've got a couple of people in the air there. And they're chugging forward there. That'll probably... Oh, no. I was going to say, I thought he might penalise them there. But this is a well-set maul. couple of... Oh! Bit of cavalry arriving. A good carry. Now we get to see Eden. If they can get to ground, now we'll get to see them play a bit of one-pass rugby. And this is when they're at their absolute best. Just grinding away through the big forward pack. Frank has a dig in there. Might have been a... No, we've got an advantage. I thought it was a knock-on, but we've got an advantage. Someone might have been offside in there. They'll want to free it, though, will Eden. They'll want to free it. They won't want to go back to their advantage. They'll want to play. Oh. Hold on. Here. Yeah, I think someone slapped the ball down. I've missed it at first view. It might be Liam, might be their skipper, or is he just coming across because he's captain? So the crowd pretty much know what they want. They want him to disappear down just below us. But I missed it first up, but it looked like one of the one of the Eden Fords. We're going for a pick go. Slapped out of his hand. It would not, I was going to say, would not surprise me. Would not surprise me whatsoever if they went for a scrum. And going back to uh, going back to the semi-final win, you have to say they upset Ponsonby. Um, it was a scrum about seven or eight metres out with 15 minutes to go in this position here. And they decided to scrum and they just minced the Ponsonby scrum Number eight went over at the back and scored for them. So you would imagine that they want some control at the back. Matakaongo is at the back. And they'll get their tight five to go to work. Control at the back. I can't see, as you mentioned, I can't see Iggy Costa getting his hands on the ball unless something goes wrong for Eden here. As there's a little break, the, the, the clouds have, have opened a little bit, and we've seen a little bit more of uh, the spectators walk through the gates of Bay 2. <laughs> They've come down from the, well, when we arrived, they're all hiding up in the, uh, and there's a few here, they're all hiding up in the, uh, in the shelter, but there are a few now that have ventured, ventured down sideline-ish, not on that side that you you're, uh, can see, they're all on our side of the field that side of the field's closed, but here we go so Eden will just want to keep this in oh, it's gone to ground they won't want to use it oh, there we go so and then penalised on that side, of, I believe it's Frank that's been penalised, a few of those boys not that happy about it but that's certainly a turnaround from what we have seen. So we hit in here, and it's, I believe it's Frank, the number one here, has been penalised. So keeps nice and square. Could have gone either way, I guess. So, but I'll tell you what it is. It's a lucky escape for Eden, uh, for uh, Grammar Tech, who have been under the pump come scrum time.
is a blueprint again strong gray to chase costa underneath it gets rid of one gray harasses him and brings him down a couple of others forwards help him out too brings him in got to let go knees are on the ground they'll set with iggy as nico's in the ruck there we go rutherford will carry he's going forward over the ball good clean out simple stuff but a niggle coming into the game as well Iggy will clear plenty of time on this one here take the ball freeze it to great great oh jeepers and mckenzie's offside there surely oh, he's, let no, he's let it go let it go away maybe i've missed something here and we break out anyway Caleb Tungatel, he's got plenty of speed he'll take him on good covering tackle hit him on murray he oh, i'm gonna say he might be out we're a long way away from here first glance i thought he might be out but looks like we're gonna go there we go murray scores well done we mentioned hit him on murray we mentioned the speed that the outside backs of grammar tech have and that is a huge turnaround from a scrum penalty back to come here now i thought that jock mckenzie no i was wrong come off the foot so it's play on and they just break out so they play what's in front of them they free them up and this man here we've mentioned about his speed he takes them on great take covering tackle from costa it looks like that's fine too hit him on murray ever present gets in here and then dies to the corner and i tell you what jared there's plenty of people closer than us they are mate they are mate that's a, that's a far side from us so we'll take that we'll take the referee's judgment on that and it was awarded five but that's a change of uh it's what gtech needed they haven't had the ball whatsoever and they've uh, come out on top they're five points up now or two points up with this kick to come it's a massive turn around in that because they've been under the pump come scrum time absolutely under the pump and then to get a penalty five meters out from their uh, own goal line when eden were coming hard they break out and then all of a sudden they now lead so mckenzie struck the first one well no push that one away but 31 gone and g tech for the first time of the match getting their nose in in front from a try for a hit of Maya Murray. Scored 11 tries in the season. This is number 12. So they kept playing to the whistle. Lovely little breakout. We mentioned the speed of their back three. Mills, Mills is the one who freed it up to Tangatau. He tried to take him on the outside. Good covering tackle from Costa. But then good for hit of Maya Murray who goes in and puts him ahead. And all of a sudden the landscape of the game just changes a little bit with eight minutes till half time. Simple exit from Jock, surely. Yeah, good length on it. What if they do that on purpose, keeping the ball in, get these big Eden Fords, keep the game alive. Plenty of space in behind too for Mills. Mills puts it high. Who's chasing? Oh, good kick, Costa. Oh, yeah. What a save from Costa. This is experience from Costa. He's done this quite well. I'm not allowed to take a man in the air, and fair enough too. That is definitely a penalty. But this is some real experience from Costa. Watch him jump in the air, knowing that he cannot be taken. So the, the kick lands in no man's space, but Costa knows you can't get taken in the air. So he actually jumps. There was actually no need for him to jump, but that is experience from Iggy Costa. Jumps and draws away a penalty. Hopefully he hasn't picked up too much of a injury from it a little shot in the ribs uh, I was too much in it. he's certainly got it wrong certainly got it wrong I think he's in danger I think he's endangered anyone whatsoever he's getting pulled out He'll go to the Simbin. Matakaongo, 
he will go, Nila Matakongo will go to the Simbin. And with seven and a half minutes to go in this game, but I, I tell you what, that is some uh, that is some great experience for Miggy Costa in the 10 jersey. He hasn't left the field yet, but you can see him just wandering off bottom of screen. They'll be down to 14. This could potentially play into Eden's hands. With one lesson, oh, they're going to obviously have to bring someone on in that, in that front, oh sorry, in that scrum. Could be in a bit of trouble here, GTEC, for the last 10 minutes of this half. So and that's exactly what they've done. So they've taken the scrum where the ball was kicked from. So it's a penalty from the kick. So they've taken the scrum where the ball was kicked from. And to mention your point, Jerry, you would imagine there's two options here. They're going to either keep the ball on the back or the G Tech slightly shortened up in their defensive line, bringing one in. They will use it. to bring someone in to the scrum. Tino Adams, I, I believe that is, the second five. Poor Tino. Poor Tino. Let's watch his technique on this side. We're looking at the number 12, blind, the playing blindside flanker. It's always mildly amusing when they come in, Jeremy. How, how often do you practice this at training, Batesy? Once every blue moon? or? Uh, you do it a bit, as long as the, as long as the backs coaches allow you, because <laughs> they get a bit, yeah, we need to be doing strikes. So, but if uh, if you do, if you get your opportunity, you certainly do. Let's see if Noro has been practicing it. I'm not sure you have, Noro. <laughs> but here we go, Eden. They truck forward, and that's definitely a penalty. We almost want to release it now and have a chance. Costa to Costa. Good footwork. Iggy's away. Gets down. They want quick ball from here. They want to free it and get into their work. They hammer away, and this is their specialty. They want to play with a little bit of tempo now. They're in behind. Although this one has been slowed up and not in any hurry. They'll go for a little pick and drive. Hill with frickin' A on his, on his edge. They'll hammer forward, they'll hammer forward. Slow. There we go again. And remembering the forward down as well is Grammar Tech. So there is, as you can see by that picture there, there's plenty of space out there if they can get a couple of those forwards in. They just work away, work to the right, work into the post. Here they come. Oh, no. So working away, Rolla Fit will pick it up off the back here. He'll clean, good clean. And he's, he is in, yes. Simple recipe we mentioned before. It's Blake Hill, the hooker. He gets in. That's good reward. They'll, they'll be happy with that. They've been... Uh... I believe they've, they've had the, the, the swing of the, the game so far, so they'll be happy with, with getting a few points on the board. Obviously, the try that came from GTEC wasn't by luck, but was uh, out of context, so they'll be happy with that try. Yeah, certainly will. As you said, they have dominated a lot of the game. The, uh, the try that went against them, you could call as unfortunate, um, but just reward for them. And really, too, for both sides. For both sides, a really sort of big... Big sort of four minutes coming into half time where uh, where they will uh, they will want to get back down here ASAP with Eden and work away. As mentioned, as mentioned, their uh, their tries don't normally come from inside their own half. So they want to collect this kick, smack it down the other end of the field. And see if they can work away. Nico Costa. One from two this afternoon. See if he can extend the lead. Right it in with him. Here we go. Uh, the fine kicker, as you mentioned earlier, Jared clocked up a few. Uh, a few competition points this year, hasn't he? Leading point scorer. He has, and he doesn't mind a try too. So like we've said that the, the Eden team doesn't mind uh, keeping in the forwards and not long scoring from there, but he doesn't mind a meet by himself, so he'll be looking to get over at some stage today too. Yeah, he was the one off the back, a quick ball, and just ducked down the short side and got them rolling forward. McKenzie, 
He'll try and whack this. Yeah, it puts it deep inside the 22. And a simple clearance. Oh, he didn't miss that by much. A simple clearance. And here we go. Off the back fence. Here we come. Wind up. Oh, good tackle too. So was it? Makes a good ball and all tackle. G Tech will recycle through their forwards, through their skipper. Liam takes it forward. I don't want to muck around for too long here. That's popped out somehow. McKenzie will put it to the air. They've had success in the air. And they'll have success again because that's a knock on. And he's potentially offside, which he is. And I think we talked about the coaches earlier. Moro and Joe for GTEC. And also enters there as well. I think that's their recipe for the second half as Jock decides. I'll tell you what, I'll have a lick. So that, McKenzie puts it high in the air. A decent chase, just slightly overruns it here, does Hala. Knocks it on, and then he was offside, the retreating footballer. So. I suppose when you look at the game, GTEC really haven't had much territory, but if McKenzie can put this over, just about every time, They've been down here, they've come away with points. Yeah, going into the half, if he can slot this over, I think as, as the coaching trio, Ants, Joseph and uh, Noro, they'll be pretty happy. They'll be pretty happy with, with, with where they stand. No one to mention. Just pulled it, just pulled it as McKenzie. What it does do, though, it does uh, take a little bit of time off the clock, and like we like we've said, Nale's in the, oh sorry, the big number eight's in the in the in, in the in the bad boys chair, the naughty boys chair. So that just takes a little bit of time off his uh, sentence. Probably to be fair, the way Eden normally construct construct their tries, they might get through to half time, and then there's only a couple of minutes after that here. For whoever takes this one here, it's Tangatau takes it. They wind up. Big contact again, but I wouldn't be mucking around. Wise McKenzie, maybe take one, maybe take two in. They go to the short side with uh, Tangatau. Tangatau takes it in again. They'll set one up. Couple of forwards. Strawn's going to put this one to the air. Murray will chase this. Plenty of heat for Costa coming. Who will win the aerial battle? Good take by Costa, but here comes Felix swarming through. Got to release him now. Knees on the ground. Just slowly recycle to Eden. It going through an opportunity. Are they over the ball there? Oh, no. Freaking hard takes one down the short side. But he's monstered in a fairly good tackle by Joao Mafasi there. And there's a hooter for half time. Costa won't muck around. And there we go. We're going to the break. You've got to say at half time, Eden, a 10 5 up against GT. You've got to say Eden deserves that. Deserves that lead. Could have easily come away with a few more points as well. Gramatek missed a couple of penalties, but an opportunist try from Hidemaya Murray. And Jared, just a five minute half time, so we, uh, if you're making a cup of tea or anything like that, you better do it now because it doesn't last long. Yeah, I'm not sure Frank Frickenay will be too happy with this. You'll have to have a talk some. A couple of backstories. Uh, Joseph Tuitabaki, who's coaching out today for GTEC, was. Uh, the 21's coach at Eden for three years running. So he's made the shift over and he's obviously done a bit of good work there and he's got himself into a, a final. So he's probably the most attractive try. It was Tangatau that took it down. Cost a very, very good tackle. Edamai Murray just backing up on the inside. An opportunist try, but still they kept playing to the whistle. And this is what we've seen a lot from Eden. And it's Blake Hill. He just hammers away. Help from Rutherford to get him over. And we will see a fair bit more of that. Nah. Best thing about half times, we've shifted from uh, the good old oranges to a bit of jet planes. We had some in here, but Batesy's finished them all, so we're, <laughs> in a bit of, we're in a bit of trouble here, mate. That's a straight so. lie, because if there was any, I would have finished them. But unfortunately, Auckland Rugby didn't give us any, so we didn't get any. There'll be words, you see there. Yeah, the technicians aren't happy in the booth next to us either. <laughs> they're, they're after some lollies as well, so. Cody, 
If you're listening in, mate, I see you downstairs somewhere. Can you bring some lollies up, please? Yeah, yeah, I see yeah. you looking at us up down there. See Dave Bateman there, the Eden coach, bringing his troops in. What other conversations have been being held now, uh, Batesy? What, what's Eden saying? What's Eden saying to the crew? Well, I think Eden, they, 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 as we mentioned, they play the way they play. We know that. that I, I still believe that through the Costa brothers, they can control territory even more, I believe. I, I don't think it's a day to be playing football uh, anywhere near your halfway. Plug the corners, you've got guys that can um, can plug corners very well. You've got a big forward pack, but just because you've got a big forward pack, don't rely on that. You've got a couple of guys like the Costa boys as well that can attack. And then on the other side of it there, I think we've seen the template for GTEC. Um, they've been very, very good when they've put the ball in the air. Scrum has struggled a little bit. Line out has functioned okay. But let's put the ball in the air because uh, Eden are just not dealing with that at the moment. Yeah, I, I think that's that's the key. And Eden's back three are quite small with Tavita Hala, a good Dilworth boy who's uh, made his way back to the club. Katoa's done some really good uh, defensive work on the, the boys coming from the back fence, but I think you've hit it on the head, uh, Batesy. That, that could be the blueprint moving forward is just put the ball up in there and hopefully look for a good reward. I've got my mate Dan Bowden in a little break. I've got my mate Dan Bowden texting me. Disappointed you're not here, but I'll tell you what, Daniel. I've got a far, far better person than you sitting next to me right now. Yeah, the stuff I'm getting from Dan Bowden is a little bit different about what's running next at uh, Flemington, so... <laughs> <laughs> no tips from him, so we'll just leave it there. <laughs> you see the skipper, Liam, he's in there. He's barking the orders. So half-time, I, I, I fairly believe that Grammar Tech will be happy with the 10-5 scoreline. Um, I wouldn't say they've been outplayed, but you'd say they certainly haven't had the better of the first half as Ant lays, lays down a little bit of the law. There's a lot more in this side. They've shown, shown touches. I think Eden, I think Eden too will be, they'll be happy with where they're at. Obviously, I think they've, they've bombed a few opportunities and like the try that uh, GTEC scored, but I think they'll still be happy with where they're at. This is their day. This is their game, 99 years. Like you've mentioned, next year's their 100th. Obviously, that's how counting works, 99-100. <laughs> but yeah, they'll be, they've got a few supporters down here. Obviously, just the club just up the road at Gribblehurst, so I think they'll be amped for the, the next second half, but I think we're, we're in for something here, mate. I think we could open up shortly. As we were just seeing the back of the couple of tries that were scored. The first one scored by GTEC, a breakout try, which is off the back of a scrum penalty, an unusual scrum penalty. And uh, went close, length to length. And then, as they give their final orders, there was one other try to Eden, which is a traditional pick and drive try. Half time's done, coach's job's done. An interesting second half on their way. And here's the other one here to Blake Hill. The number two, he just picked and go. A little bit of help there by James Rutherford, who's been good in the first half. They get over and smash over for a try. As we see, Eden, who will run left to right in the second half. They are leading. One try all. Converted try to Eden, plus a penalty. They lead 10-5 at half time. Second half, here we come. 40 minutes of football for the rest of the year. Here we go. Not a bad option. Kicks it low. They wind up, and you, you imagine, with the coaching staff. And here's Tom. Will he clear it? Yep. Good box kick. Nice in the air. They struggle a little bit. Jack Gray gets in there. Good contest. Costa takes it and offloads. They get down the short side. They recycle. Good, good carry down the short side. They recycle from there and then from here. They'll just punch away. No, they won't. Slight the great tactic if it goes in. Very good tactic from Costa. Unfortunately, his winger was in the ruck, so he didn't chase that one. But a good option. Just punching the ball in behind, putting them in that corner. 
And I don't think that Kalen Tua is going to pull a box kick out from there. But they have a little pick go. So he gets drawn in there. Do we try and get a little bit of open, open up a little bit of space for his box kick? We just go right from there. So Strawn opens up and he puts that one out. But Nico Costa, that's a kind of, that's what experience brings. You know, they hammer away, they hammer away. They saw the winger in the line. They saw Jack go in the line. Just nudges it in behind. Tell you what, off the back of what we saw in the first half, Jared, they'll maul here. I think you're right, mate. I think it's not going to go too far past uh, the last man. Here we go. So Blake Hill looking to hit his target, and I think we can expect a bit of a go forward. Here we go. A couple of minutes, as I said, down to seven forwards. Liam, plenty of pressure goes through the middle there, but they keep trucking away. They keep trucking away. No, Liam's been called offside. I thought he might have been through the middle, but there we go. And all this will do is more or less give him a free opportunity because, as we mentioned, this will just surely get nudged into the corner and they'll get close up. This is exactly the kind of rugby that Eden wants to play in the second half. Might not be the prettiest thing in the world, but I'll tell you what, a club that is in the Gallagher Shield final for the first time in 99 years, they won't care. One's as good as 100, I've been told. <laughs> good strike. Six metres out to... Out. We're back to 15 on 15. Right, here we go. So just in time. Nile Matakaungo will come back. And that'll be a welcome, welcome return. So they will need them, as you see. Seven metres out. I wonder if they just throw someone up in the air. Liam looking like he might contest. Not a silly option. But no, they secure it. A little bit higher to start, so they've got to rip away. And they carry on. They get a good carry. They recycle. Got to roll away. Two is in there. He's got to roll away. Oh, no, he's got away with that one. No, he hasn't. Yeah. Kalen Tour, unfortunately, there. Just got stuck. Stuck in between the ruck. Here we see here. So they got high on their drive, but we're looking for the number one there, unfortunately. He was just in there. Upsetting the ball. Yeah, they've taken the shot here. Get the points out to scoring margin to so get to eight potentially. Bates, in a day like today, when, when, as a coach, when do you look to roll those subs? I know we've just come from half time, but when do you look to bring the, the finishers on, as we call them? You probably. You probably when you look at it, when you look at the game, the way it's been played, fatigue factor's not huge because it hasn't been an open game. So you probably, if you've got, you know, it's hard to comment exactly, because uh, but you could probably put that out a little bit more, probably put the uh, substitutes out a little bit more, I'd imagine. So the, uh, it hasn't been a hugely open or flowing game. And saying that, we are having a couple of people warm up on the G-Tech bench. Well done, he puts it through, as Costa and as mentioned by Jared, we just extend out, we just extend out the lead. At the back of a penalty, it's not rolling away, then the knock on, so he had to go back to it. They just stretch it out to eight. A team that likes to play from in front. They like to get in the grind. Jock's just going to get this one long, get it deep inside the 22. Just chipped it. Now carry. On the top of the ball. Pops out there too. Little knock on as well. Here we go. There's the result they wanted. They needed... Just a change of momentum, the first five minutes, Eden playing the game exactly they wanted. Little change of momentum here. Comes into the first scrum of the second half. So good carry, Felix gets in, gets a good shot on. Slippery ball just pops out on the surface. And we get the first scrum of the second half. The disappointing thing is, we're up here, and I can see 
90% of the Auckland rugby staff next to me will brown, bring bottles in the game. What do we do wrong? Yeah, well, I thought this was the good seats, but maybe, <laughs> maybe we're down one more level. But now, big shout out to Auckland Rugby who put on a, a, a great event. Pity the weather couldn't uh, do the same, but hey, there's a good turnout here. And it's been a pretty good season for fo football, considering last year we obviously got cut short. So big ups to Auckland Rugby and also to the, uh, the Auckland Rugby community. Everyone out there pitching in, getting in, and put a footy on today, so we're happy. Must mention while we're here too, good year. 100%, awesome sponsor. Yeah. So if you need some new tyres, people, go to the local tyre merchant and say, uh, pretty keen on some good year ones. Say Batesy sent you, yeah, it'll be a 10% <laughs> discount. Nah, no, we can't have that one. <laughs> so here we go, first scrum of the second half. A few problems in this area. You see Nordor has fixed it up. Frank, here we go, they go to work again, trying to get the ball out of Pops out. It's messy though. McKenzie, freeze it. Oh, they set one in the midfield. Well, Tino, Tino Adams goes out, gets her, breaks out of one. Here we go, Caleb with the speed on the on the flank. They recycle there, they won't want to muck around. Strawn looks to clear. We get forward, Liam takes it in. Again, another very good carry, very good tackle though. A little bit of more width to the game now. Good speed of Ruck. The third carry, oh, that was a good shot. Solid shot in there. The speed to the game just picks up. Recycle from Strawn is quick, Liam. Plows through, makes some good metres. He'll have to roll away, although he'd be penalised. He hasn't rolled away in time. Now they really get a free shot and an open opportunity. High on the carry is Caleb, but he pushes him away and gets going as well. Lindry, I believe that's the Caleb. Just keep, got to keep the ball moving, got to keep the tempo up. So McKenzie frees it inside. They clean out. They're over top of the ball, but they get rid of them as Costa Strawn digs in. And here we go again. Go to the, they go to the right through McKenzie. Long ball to McKenzie. Frees it out there to Felix. Felix carries. They get over the top of the ball. They recycle. They set. A little bit of traffic. He'll want to get rid of that pretty quickly. Will Strawn. He feeds Murray to a couple of couple of woolling runners from their forwards. They go in and clean once again. The speed of the ball is up. McKenzie with a cross kick to Tungatau. Oh, that's a penalty. No, he plays on. Fair enough, too. And he's in. That's a try. Well done. Caleb, Caleb Tungatau gets in. Very good kick by Jock McKenzie. Was taken in the air. But the presence of mind not to worry about trying to milk a penalty or anything like that. He just plays on. He had a hand in the first try that Caleb Tungatau and he scored this one here. And the look on the replay, very, very good kick. They hit him, but not for the first, first time. They just chucked forward for their numbers. Then Jock McKenzie. He sees a little bit of space on the outside here. And good leap by Caleb. Not content to stay on the ground and potentially milk a penalty and slides over. Spoke about it in the break, the, the size of the back three and utilising uh, GTEC size, getting on top. And we've just seen it there with uh, Caleb Tangata just get on top of his, his defender Katoa, his opposite Katoa, sorry, and being able to dot it down in the corner. So once again, you talk about they close it back up. One area of the game, and we'll look at it here with, with a good carry in there once again. Just carries forward, not for the first time doing his mahi after being in the Simbin. But when they've put the ball in the air, GTEC, they've had real success. A couple of high kicks, and then that cross kick from McKenzie for Tangatau. Here comes McKenzie. He's had plenty of difficult opportunities this afternoon. This one in, and he will push that across the face. So two tries all, and just a penalty separating these two sides. Eden 13, Grammar Tech 10. 10 minutes gone in the second half. Costa the skip up. There we go. Here's a GTEC bench there. There was a little bit of movement down there early. But he kicks off. Goes long. There we go. Nella will wind up again. Here he goes again. There's Nella. Not for the first time. He has spent some time in the bin. Oh, he's knocked that one on though, unfortunately. And that's gonna say he has spent some time in the, in the bin, but he was pretty instrumental. Four or five carries inside the 22, Jared to help. 
set up that space for their second try. Yeah, might have been trying a little bit too hard. Their ball security in this kind of weather is very, very important. And I actually think I take that back. I think someone's hand's been on that and done a little bit of rip out. There's no captain's challenge, unfortunately. We're not on NRL, so <laughs> we'll take the, the referee's word for it. Good crowd, as I said. They've come down a little bit too. I was at the uh, Eden Ponies game last week too, and they were very well supportive of Eden. As you mentioned, for those who don't know, maybe looking on from afar, the Eden Club Rooms is just down the road here from Eden Park. What a, a K away, Jared, do you reckon? Probably a K if that. If that, mate, just up on Sandringham Road, Gribblehurst, the Gribble Dome, as they used to call it, or they still call it, I believe. X Swamp, I'm led to believe. Yes. So, uh, yeah. Still is a little bit of a swamp, mate. Before the <laughs> renovation's still going on with council, she's still a bit of a bog, but hey, hence the reason why Eden play the way they do. <laughs> I was going to say, mate, maybe they don't mind the fact that it's a bit of a swamp. Uh, when I woke up this morning and knew that I was coming in here this afternoon, I thought when it was hammering down, there we go, we've got our first substitute coming off. So that's Kalen Tua, the loose head for Grammar Tech. His day is done, and here's the new, uh, first scrum the new front row on. But yeah, when I woke up this morning, um, when I woke up this morning and saw the rain coming down, I knew that they wouldn't be too offended. Here we go. It's an interesting time. New scrum on. New front rows on. It's angling in there a little bit. Oh. They keep coming forward though. Ball control. No, is there? Costa's harassed at the back. And they go, they go around. They have to reset. Or oh, Eden. They'll just punch away. A familiar story from them. Punching away. One off, one off. A little bit of numbers on the short side here if they decide to use it. But they've gone against that. Costa's looking that way now. But they keep punching away at this stage. The G Tech forwards up to the challenge. Still a little bit of space on that short side whether they decide to use it. Rutherford takes one forward into the clean. Is that a little knock on in there? Rutherford not looking too good. Frickin' A takes one. His knees are on the ground. They've got to release him. He's plugging away a little almost like Pistons. They get him behind. Felix, is he on the ball? Is he on the man? He's on the man. The ball comes free. We go again. Little wedge. They come in. Good defense in there. Just chipping away, chipping away. Felix trying to get out of there. He is going to be allowed to get out of there. Punch away, not making big deal of meters. He's looking for that opportunity. Still plenty of kick space in behind as well. Frank takes one forward. He's taken out well. Good clean. Park up over the ball. You can see the difference in the two teams. They're just happy to plug away as Eden. When G Tech get the ball, there's a bit more speed to what they do. Eden will plug away. Frank again takes one in. Liam comes in, secures him. Costa looks for their number eight. He goes forward, better carry. They get over the game line this time. Now, is that their, is that their chance to free it? Yes, it is. Good line speed by McKenzie on the outside. Strawn gets in, gets over the top of the ball. He's cleaned out. Costa, back to Hill. Hill looks for an offload. Fights to stay on his feet. Again, there is space out to that left, as we see on the camera. The good carry there. Now they just want to, they want to speed it up and get it to the left. Because there is space out there. Carries in there. Good carry. Through the middle, Lawson carries and carries hard. All of a sudden, start to get over the gain line. Katoa, he breaks one too. Now they're starting to get a bit of momentum there into their game. Lawson will take one up. His momentum disappears. As, and the penalty, Felix has got over the ball. And just when they felt like they were starting to crack, starting to get him behind. Felix, the number five here, makes the tackle. That's him. He's on his feet over the top of the ball. Hill, unfortunately, misses the clean-out. He's been busy today, Felix. Been all around the park, offensively, defensively. It's been like that the whole season. Certainly a very talented athlete is Felix. He's probably not getting the show's full range of skills today in these conditions, but he's a very, very talented athlete, that's for sure. And a very good penalty given and relieving penalty as well. So, so... Which gets them just about to the halfway. Me from this secure your line out ball. 
And if you can, maybe just bring it down, suck a couple of people in. Get Strawn to just whack one up on Costa, who's in the backfield. Here we go. There we go. Sometimes I know what I'm talking about. Not very often. And there's Costa there. And then just try and knock him over, boys, and take the ball. There we go. There's the blueprint. They've secured it well. Now get some kick pressure because you'd imagine that the other Costa will get up and it'll either be Iggy or Nico who will try and clear this up. And it's Nico the nine just getting his blockers in. And then we go back, opening up a little bit of space. Got to release now as they go forward and they'll go back for a clearance inside the 22, but they can't kick it out on the full, which they have not. And this is the kind of territory, this is the kind of game that G Tech want. There's plenty of space out here to the right. Oh, that's not your, the best pass, but this man is quick. He's very quick as Caleb gets rid of one, gets rid of two, but he'll be shoveled. Oh, no. He has had to stay away from that sideline in a breezy, uh, sorry, in a wet and breezy conditions. He got rid of the first couple, but then maybe the option was either just to put it in behind. Here's the second one here, or just try and chop back in. As you see, just there, just on the sideline. But good blue, blueprint from the likes of Strong. Simple line out, put it in the air. Get Eden back in their territory. Now Eden, they'll go to their five men as they do. They'll punch a couple of their big forwards up in the midfield. Here they go, Costa, he'll free it up. Boom, big contact, cleans come in. They'll work, got both sides of the ball. Both sides of the ground to play with here. They go to the left. Oi! Costa puts one here. Here's Caleb. Plenty of space for him to kick him behind now. He frees it. Of course, they put it in there. Lots of GTEC people offside. Didn't think they want Frank catching the ball, but he's got it. And a big loose head comes bollocking bull oh, down the field. Oh, well, a poetry in motion from Big Frankie. Here we go. Hill takes one forward. Good clean. They'll have to roll away. They'll have to roll away. They get away with that. And then just knocking him behind, maybe. Costa, here we see, Costa breaks. He goes inside, oh, that's forward. Is it high? No, it's not. I thought he might have been taken high. But that is the danger that Iggy Costa does possess in here. If they can get a little bit of front forward ball, ball he just bangs off that outside foot, goes through Murray and Strong. And then it's that man that you were talking about, Felix, coming across in cover. Got him on the shoulder. Good timing and a good year. Replay. There you go. It's good to see, though. As I said, they uh, mentioned it more than once. A club that has never been to the Gallagher Shield final. I know being at uh, Ponsonby last week, they are very, very well supported. And uh, they are very, very well supported again here today. No one on the far side of the ground as our cameras look, but on the close side where we're sitting, there's plenty of people down there that are starting to get a little bit more braver as the weather as the rain has stopped. So we've got um, got the opportunity to get back to their bread and butter, set a scrum, 22 out. Huge open side to work with. Big on the, on the edge on the right on the right side, he's, he's been a bollocking runner. So he's uh, I think we're going to try to see him get a, a bit of ball and a bit of space and see what he can do. Oh, actually, I've got that wrong. GTEC's got the ball. Sorry about that. Uh, they can, they yeah, still yeah, have a run, though, yeah, mate. Exactly. Next time they're going to have a run, probably just not this time. You never know. Well, oh, yeah, that's... They've just started for all the scrum dominance that they've had. Eden. They've I just love. started to lose that. A couple of short-arm penalties. Here we go. It obviously is his end plate. Costa has been quite good under the high ball, but he knocks that one on. And it's play on. This is a, they want to clean this ruck really quickly and spread to the edge here. They've got plenty of people on this left-hand edge. Good shot in between. Holds his feet, though. Good clean out. And then Straw rips it back to McKenzie. McKenzie nudges it in behind. Good kick from Jock McKenzie. Good percentage play. They go from the scrum. They put one high up in the air, they get the turnover, and then one phase, they spread this one here, one phase, good contact from both sides to keep your feet, then Strawn gets in, frees it back to McKenzie, and just plugs that corner. And now Eden, 
and they have to work their way out. So the five-man line out, their traditional, their traditional line out from this area is a five-man. They'll go to the middle. They'll smash the likes of Nella up in the middle. This one's been brought to ground. They haven't been able to free it, so this one's been brought to ground. Go back, Costa to Costa. Iggy will clear. And this is where the GTEC forwards have to work to get back. They want to get to the midfield here. Oh, no. Tamatau comes back. Good option, though. Good option. Not on. Kicks it long. They only if I want to keep the ball in. Costa retrieves. He punts it back. A little bit of force back. Now being played. Mills will take the ball. He will return. There's plenty of forwards in the middle of the park who are a little bit tired standing there plenty of open space on the left hand they see it and they plug it and that'll roll in over in and well done that is a wonderful wonderful kick from Hala they got into a little bit of force back and it's the Eden team that comes out well and truly on top and their big forward pack they will be wrapped with that they just get to jog down to the set piece 20 minutes to go in this one. Yeah, very good nudge, very good eyes from Tavita Hala. Like I said, he's a Dilworth boy and his, uh, his actual, his older brother's uh, playing for Ikalatahi. So he's in the Tongan team, uh, Kali Hala. So uh, they've both got a bit of skill, must run through the family. It's good. It was lovely, wasn't it, really, as you can just see in the cameras here. The rain has sort of disappeared for the last sort of 40, 50 minutes, but it's just come back, just when GTEC are trying to throw the ball in. It's quick at the front is Felix. We go to Liam, we go back. Oh, that wasn't quite what they wanted, but it's play on. No knock on, no. Ooh. A knock on from Eden. Strawn will put it high. Gray will chase, but they'll come back. Surely they'll come back, yeah. So they get out of jail a little bit there, Eden. A little few substitutes being made. So one from each side. A loose forward coming on for Eden as the rain really starts as you can see in the cameras <laughs> and all of a sudden those people that I was talking to you about Jared that were starting to get a little bit of brave and going down close to the ground they've all of a sudden disappeared back up into the stands they have mate they have there's a, there's a few though there's a few Eden stalwarts down there giving it a bit of a hoo-ha so they're going to be strong Hopefully they've got a spare change of clothes back in the club room because it's listening to K down the road. So. There we go. They had scrum dominance early Eden, but they've started to started to wilter away a little bit with a couple of short arms. They won't want to let G Tech out of here by any stretch of the imagination. They want to keep them in there, give them no soft bouts. Try and as we mentioned try and keep the scrum on, try and get them going backwards if they can. Give them terrible ball, give strong terrible ball to, to clear. Well, they're, they're kind of hardy, a couple of umbrellas, but yeah. So they're doing better than us. Are they? Yeah, they are, mate. Are these all your mates have disappeared from down there that we were... Uh, you were giving us a bit before, yeah. yeah. There we go, there they get more. Oh, well done. It's done very, very well to get out of there. He's, they've done extremely well at the back of the scrum. Neller and Strawn. They're under all sorts of pressure as the GTEC scrum just gets taken apart as the rain comes in sideways to the 8-9 combination to get them off the back of the scrum and get them away. It was very, very good. A couple of more substitutes as well. A couple more in the forwards with 20 minutes to play, 18 minutes to play. A little bit of fresh legs. Yeah, that's Darius coming on for uh, GTEC. Special mention, uh, he was a pro sport uh, trainee a few years back. That's a little bit of an academy that Auckland Rugby win, uh, run, so he'll be uh, happy to be out here not setting up flags, but actually playing on Eden Park. <laughs> good line-out, good take, good feed. They go away. Simple formula in from the blind wing. Good carry. Costa comes in. They work away. Same side again. Step goes back into the traffic. They try and get over the ball, and they've got there. There's their second grab, though. Costa, <laughs> almost stopped for a second there. It's going, Rutherford with a good carry. They set forward again. Similar pattern, 
They'll just rumble away. Well, they'll just rumble away. There is space in behind, though. Do they want to use it? As we mentioned, the ball is very slippery. Frickin' hard, not for the first time. Takes a carry. Knees on the ground. They must release him. They clean through. Keep working the same way. Very, very good carry again from Lawson. He's been pretty good today, Connor Lawson. The number eight jersey for Eden. Comes forward. Rutherford of the Cameron variety. Frank can't keep the ball off. Old Frank. Knees on the ground again. They must release him. They get over and over the top of the ball. I think they're on the man, though, not the ball. Yeah, and not rolling away. I think that, that penalty's for. Um, so, as we mentioned, it might not be the most attractive football, but when you can drag penalties out, and now you guys going to say, what will it cost to do? Will he back himself? Will he back himself to kick this one and extend the lead? Oh, Jared, I know he scored a lot of points this year, but this must be just on his edge of his range from the kicking I've seen him do. I'm not sure if the gods are out here for Eden today, but just as we speak, the, the rain has stopped. The wind's still there, so he's going to have a little bit of help. But the rain that will put a little bit of uh, issue on his plant foot has gone away pretty much. So Still a big kick, 45 on the angle potentially, so we have to strike it well. We've seen them all very, very well. A bit surprised with the decision? Yeah, I, I, I guess it's hard to know because I haven't seen him kick that much, but I would imagine this will be this will be right on the edge of his of his range. So I guess hindsight's a wonderful thing, and that's what we're gonna find out. But he's gonna have to hurry. And the the everywhere man, <laughs> big Frankie, he's decided to tell you what, I'll do that too. Not sure if he's doing it. Oh, he's gonna have to hurry it too. And struck it pretty well. Oh, oh there we go. Wow. Well done. Well, I suppose, as I said, hindsight's a wonderful thing. And the reward for that is it a six-point game. And now G-Tech will not only have to score, they'll obviously have to convert it to gain the lead. So Jock punches it nice and, nice and low. Good carry. They'll come back. Good contact in there. Good clean, you'll imagine. One, two, carries, that might be it. And a straight clear, there it is. Costa to Costa, inside the 22. They pump it high, plenty of people back for GTEC. A three-man back three. And they come forward off the back fence. There's a be some good contact here. They bring in, try and slow it down. Both sides to play with, they free. Good, oh, good option from Murray, but he's just sliced, it, sliced it. Good intent. Saw them some space well in behind, but he's just absolutely sliced it off the side of his boot. There's a couple more. You see, he's hit a mile, Murray. So you can see they're a bit short here. So they start to come up to close, and there's space in behind there as they were closing on that outer edge. And unfortunately, he's leant back on the Goodyear replay and just hammered that one into touch. few substitutions for Eden have just come on. Kartor, the right wing, just come off. I think he's been pretty strong in defence, taking some people from the back fence. Surprised me a bit that he's come off, to be honest with you, because they've used him in this sort of role here. Either him or their two... Oh, oh that's some contact. There's that two on one fussy, puts a good shot on. And in true Eden fashion, they'll be in no hurry. Frankie will take one up. Good carry, makes some good metres, need to get to ground now, which he does. They keep wrapping around the same way. Simple football. Good carry again. And they'll come back slow, yet effective. They go straight through the middle this time. A pick and go. Good carry. Keeps his feet going in behind. Jack Gray tries to get over the ball, but he's cleaned out of the way. Here we go. Blindside winger comes in for a little bit of a forte in there. They slow it down. Costa reorganises. Couple of fresh legs. 19. Oh, cheapest. 19 and 20 get involved there. Fresh from the bench, they'll just clip, chip away, chip away. Blake Hall gets involved. Good carry, keeps those feet working. Look at the amount of Eden players in behind. Look at all the Ford Packer right there, ready to go. Hamish got to be careful, might be offside there. They keep punching away. This ball 
isn't going anywhere near Sam Nash on this far wing out here. Just punch away. And even if they don't come away, good carry again. And Felix tries to get over the top of the ball. He's on no oh, penalty. Sealing off straight to ground. No, sorry, holding on. So he must have been quick on that ball. Very, very quick. It's a big, very big play too. So he was almost inevitable what they're doing. Punching away, punching away. Come away with points. And here's a shot. I believe this is doing a fussy putting one on. Is this Victor, is it? Yes, it is in the two jersey. Boom. Boomfa. I've stolen it off someone, but we'll, <laughs> we'll let it run. Just underneath the ball as well. So uh, underneath the shoulders. So good timing. Four man line out. Five in that line up, but the centre. Oh, oh. oh. They dodged a little bullet there because they had five in that line up, and now they've got a scrum. And as I said, on the evidence of the scrum, <laughs> Cameron Rutherford, a little wry smile there. They're pretty happy. So. Question for you, Batesy. Uh, when we're doing it, when we're working with our attack and whatnot, and we've got a, a, a pod set up. Some people might know there's, there's a tip option. Have we seen one of them today? <laughs> no, we haven't seen one. And yeah, that's not how he didn't play, but uh, no, we haven't seen one. It's been a straight carry and it's been in pretty close. And um, probably, if anything, from the Eden point of view, they've almost got tighter from what I've seen. Maybe that's to do with the weather. And then on the other side of the ball, what you've seen is you haven't seen as many tip options because you've seen G Tech almost try and get out of that. Uh, of that contact zone and get into the seam of the defense away from the sort of first three defenders. It's really hard to comment on uh, on Grammar Tech because they really haven't had that much ball. We certainly haven't seen a tip option from uh, from Eden. for their first victory. I oh, said first victory in 99 years. First time here in 99 years. Good thing about that is you don't even have to catch a bus, taxi, or Uber uh, back to the club. You just walk down the road. So it's a few lime scooters somewhere around, so I think some of them were taking them home. Yeah, that's a penalty. That's going to be a penalty. Keep. Oh, okay. Sorry. No, it's not. So here we go. They keep working away. I thought they might keep that in for a little bit longer. But here we go. Traditional. Rutherford winds up. Yeah, oh, good clean in there. Very good clean because he was isolated for a little bit there. Once again, James Rutherford this time. He gets going. Someone's going to have to roll away from G Tech in there. Otherwise, he might be in a little bit of trouble. Hill takes one in. Big dummy. Doesn't fall for it. Still looking for this tip option yet that you're looking for, Jared, but it hasn't come as yet. Here we go. No, one off again. Plow forward into the, into the defense. Slow and steady. Prop to prop. Does that count as a tip? I'm not sure. Oh, Frank's done it, so we'll leave it. <laughs> he can't do oh, any wrong, and look what's happened. Here we go. He's that's got a, a penalty. That's all off the back of Frank's tip there. You asked for it. Frank delivered, and look what they've got here. They won't want to play this too long. Have a shot and make sure that you keep that advantage because, for me, that is right in Costa's range. Yeah, there we go. They will, they'll throw it up, and you imagine they're going backwards. If nothing comes of this, you'd almost imagine they'll go back for that penalty that they're playing under. There, here it is here. Frustrating for Grammar Tech, as it is. They know there are plenty of hands on hips, hands on knees from Eden, but frustrating it is from Grammar Tech. They've been very, very good in this area. And this one here, you wouldn't bet against them as G Tech skipper. Liam Hellamines gets a little bit of treatment. And they come together for a chat. Ten minutes to go in the game, mate, in the final. What are we looking for? What are we looking for, Eden? They're obviously having a little bit of powwow now while we get uh, one of the costas gets up to take a slot. What are we saying? Obviously, not too much is going to change from the, the blueprint, but... Nothing changes for Eden. 
got nothing changes for Eden. They're winning the game. They don't need to change what they're doing. They've done it all year, and that's what's affected for them. So this will probably go over, you'd imagine. And all they will do, take the kickoff, one ruck, kick it back down there from GTEC. The balance that they've got to come up with is this. They can't fall into thinking we must run everything from everywhere because it's not a day for that. But that is their uh, superpower, if you'd like to mention it. So, yes, they're going to have to start taking a few chances, but don't run everything. Still play a little bit of territory and get it down there, but you're going to have to open up the game a little bit. That doesn't mean from inside your 22. As we mentioned, the ball in the air has been very effective for them. The kick long, every time they've been into the 22, they've got space. So nothing changes from Eden's point of view. And from GTEC's point of view, they're going to have to open the game up a little bit, but that does not mean from inside your own 22. Big kick, this one. This one changes the shape of the game. Kicked well so far today, has he? Good strike. And that's it. Yeah, well done. There we go. Nine point difference with uh, only eight minutes to play. And all of a sudden, Eden are out to nine points. The game is pretty much now on their own. And unfortunately for GTEC, they've lost their skipper. Liam has come to the sideline. So that's his day got done. Jock punches it. I would almost just kick it straight from source, which they have. They've got enough time, so they kick it straight from source. Here we go. So I still don't believe they need to throw everything at it. There is still opportunities to find kick space. Caleb will take it in here. Plenty of Eden people around him. Can they get on the ball? No, good clean out. Good clean out. Bit of width. Good strike, good kick. It's covered. Thought it was going a little bit further. Costa will just... Well done, he sets it alight. And goes inside. That was on the shoulder, I'm pretty sure. So Referee agrees with you, mate, so we'll let that one play. Good clean, and then he'll see Eden. They'll keep rumbling away. Murray and Gray will try and take him towards the sideline, and they have. And this, is where, this is where things have to change. So the, he, they can't allow them to be slow here. And here it is, Costa takes it. Just has a look, you think they're going to punch it down the short side, but just freeze it up, good tackle. Mm. Might have clipped as well, but we'll let him alone. But this is, for me, this is where uh, this is where GTEC can't allow things to get slow. Yes, I know, I understand that there might be, there is someone down injured, but my question to the referee would be, is he affecting the play? Do we need to stop the game for him? Grammar Tech need to find a way to pick this one of your mates there? <laughs> that it is, yep. <laughs> Good old Stevie Devine. Legend him. Uh. Big shift from the, the GT Cocker today. There we go, ball in. Here we go, need to try and break this up a little bit. They need to play with tempo. It's good tempo, they shift it. Space on the edge, carry. Felix carries, shift that, shift it to the edge. There's space out here. McKenzie takes it, has a crack at the line. Taken down. They try to recycle, they come back. Once again, they'll come hard off this line. Frank makes a tackle, good in roads though, good carry. Again, they'll have to keep it moving. Isolated a little bit, but they get in, they free it. Comes punching back now. Comes back and through. He's lost the ball, has he? No play on. And they are short, so mckenzie has got to free it. All standing in a flat line across the field, shoveling it across a little bit. Gray. Gray takes the ball, heads back inside. Good carry. Nella bumps one off, not for the first time today. They clean out over the ball. Eden putting plenty of people into the ruck time, Go trying on. to slow it down. They carry forward, make a couple of meters. This ball's got to go. Felix gets on the outside, puts a bit of footwork on. Caught high. Caleb takes one in. He's held and contained pretty well. Today hasn't had many opportunities. They punch back to a pod. 
ball taken in behind them, so he didn't come up and they knock him over. Frankie's on the ball. He's a go. Good defense so far by Eden, staying strong. G Tech, not much depth in their attack. Keep recycling away. Felix puts his hand up. Murray, he's the kind of people they need with a ball in hand. Murray, the guys that can break up a game. Get him on the inside advantage. Fazier almost knock it on and go for a quick tap. Just go, you gotta go, you gotta go. There's no point in stopping. Hold on, what's happened here? Has he jumped on the ball and tried to slow it down on purpose? Claims of that he's elbowed him in the head, but at the end of the day, all I know is that the game has been slowed down, so Eden's pretty happy with that. And there's that man at the bottom of my ruck again, Frank Frickene, having something to do with it. So. Big decision here, mate. What, what, what's, what, what's the thinking behind here? To be honest with you, mate, I'll, I'll just have a quick look at this replay. So he's not quite sure what we're looking for, so he's penalised. Yeah. Uh, I suppose well, we can't see that side there, but that could actually go against um, G Tech here. That could reverse the penalty. Depends what when the whistle went. No, by the look of that, it's not going to be reversed. Um, I, I think for me, I, I think I would go for the line on this occasion. Oh no, mate! It oh, is it has been reversed. Sorry, there we go. So it has the way Acosta looked at it. Maybe he was just. Maybe he was just disappointed that he wasn't being sent to the Simbin. <laughs> so the look he gave was a look of disgust almost. And I thought it made me think that the penalty hadn't been reversed. But yes, it has. And that's a big decision. You'd almost imagine that as long as this one goes out, we could have a little bit of history. Because then it has. He's found the touch well. You'd imagine that Eden will dawdle to this line out. They'll throw their five men in. As long as they win it, they'll go OT, they'll punch their big forwards up in the midfield. And then the other set will just roll around the far side, and they'll pick and go. No speed to what they're doing. It's gone Blake Hill, showing plenty of good darts today. Rolliford, once again, here we go, OT, and then we go to there. Two big loose forwards will punch forward through in the midfield, they'll clean out. Then there are other forwards. Oh, they've choked oh. them up, though. No, it's going to be a wall. GTEC's done well here. They yep. needed this. They needed this, but yeah, it's not terrible for Eden, though. What it's not terrible about is that what it has done is we're four minutes to go, a couple of subs, and you would imagine that this scrum is not being set <coughs> until there's about three minutes to go. So a couple of substitutes here as well. So they get usual pattern, just a little bit high in contact this time. They get under them, they choke them, they come in, and they stack them. And they turn the ball over. So four minutes to play. You can hedge your bets on this probably being reset a few times, Batesy. I've been in the scrum, I think, twice, and that was both in seven, so I wouldn't know what's going on, but I know that uh, I'll try to get this reset a few times. Yeah, well, if you're eating, if you can do it on this close side to us, so here we go, there's one, so you're happy with that if you're eating. On this side here, you'd almost try, try and bring it down away from the referee's side. And that would chew up a little bit more time as well. It just looks like in this in this stage that it is going to be too little, too late. They've loaded the far side. They do have Murray on this left-hand side. Murray. So if they can clear it well from the scrum, there is a lot of opportunity to go down the short side. They've got Iggy. Oh, unfortunately, a poor pass, which has put him on the back foot. They're not going to get any launch from this. And Eden will walk forward from the set piece. Felix will get going. Yes, jockeyed towards the sideline. They clean out. They recycle. And this is when we th things have to change because they may as well just throw it around. I just don't see. You can lose by nine. You can lose by 29. You may as well just try and throw everything in it because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what you lose by. You 
Oh, good defence. Drives him towards the sideline and keeps it, keeps it going. Mm. Oh, he's just stood on the sideline. He's just stood on the sideline. Trying to clear the ball here. You see Big Felix come down the short side, cleans him out, and just really picking the ball up. There, watch the boot. Oh, we can't quite see it. I oh, know there it is there, so he's touching the sideline. Oh. There it is there, picks up the ball, and he's out. And unfortunately for GTEC, that will be the end of their chances. A couple of minutes to go now, nine points behind. Potentially the last last line out of the season. They've gone for a full, which they don't normally do in this area, and this is exactly the reason why they've gone for it. <laughs> just, they're just gonna suck this up, go forward, go forward. As long as they keep moving forward, they can keep it in there for as long as they can. They've come through the middle, no they haven't. Oh, this is a good wall too. And this in some ways, oh, he's going for crowd surf up there. He's <laughs> offside. <laughs> Got one of the Rollerford boys, James, it is going crowd surfing. Cameron's there riding it in there. He's pretty happy, and to be fair, to be fair, this is quite a, oh, I'm not too happy about what's going on there. They've lashed out, but this is quite a good way when you think about it for Eden to finish because this is what they've done all game. They've had the battle battle away battle away you might say it's not pretty but at the end of the day they're the ones that are going to come out on top and it's taken them 99 years but shortly they will get their hands on the Gallagher shield he's going to clear it now as Nico time is up Nico's going to reach into that ruck you're going to no it's the skipper Iggy his brother he's going to pump it into route row 17 and there you go your Gallagher shield champions for 2021, for the first time ever in their 99 year history, is Eden. Well done, Eden. Mate, what a performance. We didn't expect too much more from them, about, apart from keeping, but that's just an awesome, awesome effort for, for a club just up the road. I think they're going to have a bit of fun tonight, and I think they're probably just walking their playing gear back to the club rooms. <laughs> There's Manu Power in there as well, and one of the young 20 year olds who played for the New Zealand 20s. Blake Hill, he was very, very good. There's also a good story too, Jared. When you look at this side a few years ago, this club, sorry, a few years ago, they were really struggling down the bottom, isn't it? And they've, uh, they've put a bit of work in. They've got some boys together that uh, they might not necessarily be the flashiest people around, flashiest players around, but they go to work for each other. They must have a very, very good culture. They know what works for them, and they just stick to that. They sure do, mate. And I, just the scenes out here, it's, we can't see it on the TV, but there's a few people that have been waiting a long, long time for this. A few old heads, I guarantee, some life members that will be having a few ales tonight. So, full credit to Eden and the supporters and the team out there. They've done a, a great job. We see the supporters there. As I mentioned earlier, the semi final when they upset ponies. <laughs> when they upset ponies. They had very, very good support based at Western Springs as well. And it is awesome to see, it is absolutely awesome to see that with professional rugby, test match rugby, super rugby, Bunnings NPC, all that, you just still good to see what this means to people. They are absolutely wrecked. Yeah, do make mention to GTEC. They've got young bucks in that team, some young boys that will. This won't be the last time they're here on Eden Park contesting for the Gallagher Shield. They've had a fantastic season too, so. Be disappointed with the result, but I'm pretty sure we'll see them again. Yeah, you're certainly right. There's plenty of plenty firepower there, aren't they, on the GTEC side. I don't want to make excuses for them, but the conditions certainly didn't help the way that they wanted to play. Um, and then at the end of the day, just a uh, couple of opportunities that they took, and just the one or two they couldn't they couldn't capitalise on. Just meant. That Eden, at the end of the day, were the ones who come out victorious, 19 to 10, and for the first time in their 99-year history, they will take home. They will get their hands on the Gallagher Shield. It's a double for the club too, so they've won the Premier Development. I just saw that shield, or that sorry, that cup being raised down on the bottom. So the club's going to be uh, in full noise tonight. There it is, right there. 
hope the uh, hope the club manager has asked for a, uh, a life, uh, later liquor license so they can stay on for a little bit longer. Bit of Boris Johnson with the England team, so hopefully we'll, we'll be able to have a few ales a bit longer in the night. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome, mate. It's great scenes, isn't it? It's great scenes. It's good to be able to play at Eden Park too. The weather probably didn't live up to what we wanted for the game, but... <laughs> Bateman giving it into him. He'll have a, having a few as well, so... Not necessarily a lip reader, but I'm pretty <laughs> sure I knew what came out of his mouth. So... Good on him too. Head coaching staff, I know the Fina Mark is involved with you as well. Oh, there's Tom, a life member. He'll be stoked, he'll be happy. Look at him, a bit emotional. This is special. Man. This is what it's all about, mate. Oh, yeah. 99 years and we're there. We're going to respect that. That is awesome. That is rugby. That is rugby, one. Oh, that is rugby 101. Oh, 99% of that is. Um, that's a respect to show. A life member, a guy that's been there from, for a long, long time, and he gets to savour a victory. And on the other side of things, there's G Tech Felix speaking to the boys at the moment. And I'll be disappointed. And as you mentioned, though, Jared, a young side as well. And on their day, if the conditions were slightly different. I probably would have created a little bit more of a threat. I'm be proud. A good effort to get here. There's a whole lot of guys, and I look at their back line. Jeepers, and I can, off the top of my head, I can rattle off five people who are under 20. Under 21, sorry. So, um, the club's in good stead for, for future years, and like you've said, mate, there's some real, real excitement. And I think Caleb Tangatau, he was probably the most exciting on park today. Just didn't get the opportunity, wasn't afforded in these conditions, but looking forward to see them uh, in some other colours shortly. Yeah, they'll roll into their rep programs, won't they, for for Auckland, be it, be it the Bunnings NPC team, be it Auckland B, be it Auckland under-19s. They'll roll into that. So for some of these guys, their rugby season finishes. Some of these guys, it continues on as well. As the bumblebees take their day. Well, I was going to say the day in the sun, but it's hardly a day in the sun. <laughs> but I suppose it's shining somewhere in their heart. So, and there it is. There, just confirmation. After 80 minutes, it's Eden for the first time in their history. 19, Grimmer Tech, 10, and that is what they will get their hands on. The Gallagher Shield, for the first time in their history, special moment for the club. As they shake hands. Gracious, gracious and... There's a skipper there, Adamaya Murray. It was dangerous when he could get an opportunity, but to give credit to Eden, they just snuffed out those opportunities. They didn't give them enough. There's a couple of young fellas as well. I've mentioned Jock McKenzie in there, Tom Strawn. Yeah. Coaching staff. Coaching staff, Joseph Tuitavaki, close mate of mine, feeling for the man. Won't be disheartened though, he's had a great season along with Noro and the older one, Ant Strawn. It's good to see as well. You know, there was uh, a couple of times in the game, got a little bit testy as well, you know, as you get in the contact sport after the game, you all come together. Let's just hope, no, no, the emotions are different for both sides, but let's just hope that at the end of the day, they go back in the changing room, they share a beer, as it traditionally happens, and everyone is happy. Matali brothers as well, two, one with Tonga at the moment. And just in there, two lock forwards that, that weren't there for GTEC today, so that could have potentially helped their forwards out. 
Yeah, also their hooker, Jay Fonokalafi, with the Tonga team as well. So they've, they are missing a few, but I don't want to say, take any weight from Eden because Eden's missing. Sione Tupolotu is with the Tonga team as well. So there's a representative international duties for some of these boys. But hey, you've got a large squad and that's what you do when you get an opportunity in there. Everyone's put their hand up today. Eden as well, you look at the likes that I've seen them down there. Manu Pai, who played for the New Zealand 20s today and he's down there now, just across the road at Dilworth. So Manu and Violini, who also played for, for the New Zealand 20s today. They were in there today and not with the even side, so there's plenty of plenty of people missing on both sides. But congratulations to Eden who have picked up the victory here today and also in Prem One. Well we've got you there. Hasn't been Best day for GTEC, who unfortunately lost the 21s final 29 to 12 to Marist as well. So great to get them to get in two finals. So good depth in that club. Young squad, this one. And also their 21s obviously going pretty well. So well done for Marist for the 21s. But the day really belongs to Eden. Two championships, as mentioned on numerous occasions. They uh, have never won the Gallows Shield. Today is their day as we're just waiting for them to come forward. And you can imagine they're pretty keen on just hanging around <laughs> and <laughs> have a bit of time to themselves. But we're waiting to just cross down here, downstairs for the presentation. But at the moment, Eden are just a little bit slow on things. Nothing much changed from the 80 minute performance, mate. <laughs> so uh, there's no point of changing it post whistle. <laughs> Anything that might change is not that I'm running for assumption. The water bottles might change into some other bottles shortly, but hey. Only right, only right. I might be wrong. Do make a special mention to the referees and they'll get their acknowledgements shortly, but they did a fantastic job. It's not easy for them out there in the conditions too. So uh, Marcus Playo, Tim Olive, and uh, the other uh, AR, they've been uh, fantastic. So uh, there they are there on the screen. Great effort from them. If you want to be a referee too, you get in touch with Auckland Rugby Union. We're always looking for referees, okay? It's, you know, if you can't play the game or you want to give back or something, sometimes it's not an easy job, but it's very, very much appreciated by the community, the rugby community. As we watch Eden lining up to thank their fans. And we will leave you here and we'll Kia go down to the Goodyear presentation. And, and it's Eden's Jake day, Eden taking out Primatex in the final for the their first time in the presentation of the 2021 Gallagher Shields. I'd like to welcome Auckland Rugby Council of Delegates Chairman Brett Manson and Auckland Rugby Chairman Stu Mather to the stage. I'd like to ask Brent to present the Goodyear Tyres Player of the Day. Ladies and gentlemen, your player of the match from Eden. Frank Frickenay. Supporters, thanks to all our management, Physio Edge, Martin Sigley, best physio in Auckland. Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, we couldn't have a season, we couldn't have a final without them, and tonight they've done a great job. Please welcome to the stage your match officials to receive their medals, assistant referees Aidan Cameron and Tim Olive, and your referee for the final, Marcus Plale.
And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd now like to call forward Liam Helen Ames from Grammar Tech to say a few words. Um, first of all, to Iggy and the Eden lads, um, fair play lads, that was fucking brutal. Oh, sorry, that was really brutal. Well deserved. Sometimes there's a saying that it was just a bounce on the ball, but hand on heart, we were outplayed today, and that was thoroughly, thoroughly deserved. So enjoy it, lads. I'm sure you lads will celebrate accordingly, so look after it, and we'll see you guys next year. Um, to our lads, lads, unreal season. That's never going to be taken away from us. We got so close. We just put our heads down, keep working, come back next year. That much better, go that much harder, and I'm sure we'll be in this in this spot. Also to our supporters, thank you so much for the season. You guys have been unreal. Um, and also, safe travels. Everyone have a good night. And uh, thank you very much. Well said, Liam. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's now time to hear from your Eden captain, Ignacio Costa. Vamos. <laughs> all right. Oh, I'll do it in English for you boys. Just, just first of all, I'd like to thank everyone here supporting Ian's the program at Tech, but especially the Ian supporters. Just thank you. Huge thank you. <laughs> we'll start off. Um, just Grammar Tech, you guys had a hell of a season. Came to our grounds early on. Took Freddie from us. You know, it's obviously it's going to be a winner, and we're, we'll take it. We're, we're happy we came with a win, but. Um, yeah, good stuff on your season. I know that I'll see you next year. You got a young team, and you'll pull through next season. Um, enjoy tonight. To just to Eden, Tom. I know you're there somewhere. Tom, we did it, mate. It's been 99 years in the making, but we got there. <laughs> just special. <laughs> Before I go, on, special mention to our reserves. They got up as well, hey. So, boys, congrats. Number one, hey. Just, just a reminder, Eden, everyone, we've been at the bottom for, for a long time, and now we're, we're slowly coming up. Tom will gladly tell you, I think he's been here since the 50s, and now we're on top, and just, we want to be a consistent team. We're working towards being a consistent team and a top team, like the Grammar Techs and Ponsonby's of, of, of Auckland, and boys will no doubt him, hopefully we'll get there, we'll be consistent, and we'll be, we'll be back next year, no doubt. So boys, we'll enjoy tonight, as always, tonight. You can stick with Tapu, you don't have to stay away. Tapu. <laughs> Love you, brothers. Um, the, the rest of the thank yous, everything else from Eden, I'm sure we'll, we'll leave it for the club rooms. We'll go back to the club rooms and we'll enjoy tonight. But again, thank you. Let's enjoy tonight. Thank you, everyone. We did it. Perhaps you stay around first because it's now time to receive your medals. Led by Captain Ignacio Costa. I invite the Eden team to come forward and receive your medals and gather around the trophy moments away from lifting it.
And now, ladies and gentlemen, Stu will present an equipment voucher from Gilberts and the Gallagher Shield to Captain Ignacio Costa. Ladies and gentlemen, Let us see the Eagles fall!